All right. Uh, my name is Marco, and I'm very happy. Well, I will be very, very fast uh, since it's the end of the day, and I'm, I'm really tired, and I guess you guys are tired. So, um, yeah, um, I work on um, mini liquid stuff. I don't work at Blockstream. A lot of people ask me, oh, you work at Blockstream? No, no, no worry. <laughs> I'm an external guy. Um, so, the title is a bit of a buzzword, I know, but I think it makes sense, so bear with me, and uh, you will see it. So, uh, my first question is like, any of you like is building online? Like, nobody. Okay, that, that's cool. Uh, I think that, you know, I'm, I'm very, I, I do this provocative sentence in saying that you probably, you're not building online. I go back again to say, Hon is very important. I heard this speech a lot, you know, oh, I'm building online. But the thing is that, uh, you know, you will define McDonald's building on Visa or building on Mastercard? No, because they are accepting dollars via Visa or Mastercard, but they are not building on uh, the payment method. And the same goes, I guess, for 99% um, of, of startups or applications. Because in the end, Lightning is a payment technology network which allows you to either send money or receive money, nothing in between. And usually when you see a classic Lightning application, what you see is like, okay, they show you an Lightning invoice, and you deposit, right? But in the end, all the logical application happens in a classic database or in a classic, you know, web application like it could be with PayPal. There's no difference in terms of how this application operates. It's just that it's going to accept Bitcoin via Lightning. Or eventually, if they want, they will let you withdraw. So some of these examples, which most of them I use personally every day, so I'm very grateful that they exist. But if you go look to each of them, uh, all of them are custodial application that are accepting Bitcoin aligning. For example, Geyser, right? So Geyser is kind of Kickstarter aligning, that's how uh, it's defined. But, you know, I need to trust Geyser to give, you know, if I am a beneficiary of a campaign, I need to trust Geyser. Hey, uh, will you give me the donation of my, you know, of my contributors? And also, I cannot enforce some logic which is atomic, like, I don't know, some milestone, or I cannot enforce, like, some refund if, uh, I don't know, a milestone or a cap is not reached, right? So I cannot do this type of programmability. I need to trust a normal centralized application. This goes for, I don't know, Collider. Collider is a, a derivative exchange, uh, which is great. I can deposit a lining, but still, it's a centralized exchange. Uh, I need to trust them in the future to withdraw my, my funds. Uh, the same goes for uh, Starbacker, which is kind of creator, you know, uh, platform, but I need to deposit again. The same goes for Stacker News. Stacker News is a great project. Uh, it's kind of Reddit, uh, well, Lightning at core. It's super fun. I use it a lot, but still, uh, I'm depositing uh, in their own wallet. And the same goes for Lightning Markets and many examples. I think that there are many, many examples. Most of Lightning apps that claim to build on Lightning, they just accept Lightning. There is another use case, uh, which is, to me, it looks like more native Lightning use case. It's like using, uh, right, uh, Lightning, it's the Lightning infrastructure to send message, to do message passing. And they do either key send and use the gossip protocol, or we can key send to attach extra data. So I can use, I'm using Lightning nodes, Lightning gossip, to basically, you know, uh, to send some messages instead of sending a normal HTTP request. Well, for some people, this looks like uh, spam, spamming the Lightning network, right? So, when in the future Lightning will be used from for payments, will be one moment where you know, like these use cases will be, you know, uh, will be evicted from from these use cases because they are spamming the Lightning infrastructure. They can use a normal peer-to-peer -peer connection, web RTC, whatever other apps, but they don't really need uh, Lightning. They are just spamming the Lightning infrastructure. So, okay, I'm here to say. I think there is another approach for you know making application, and especially in contests where you want to decrease your liabilities as a you know centralized uh, player. And I think you know Liquid is an uh, interesting um, sidechain, right? Uh, which definitely has some uh, component. There is a federation, right, which is holding the Bitcoin. But again, compared to a centralized coin, to moving to a federated model definitely improves the things. And you know I'm not here to shilling on the selling liquid and not uh, making any profit out of it. But because I truly believe that especially for financial application, uh, has all the prim primitives right. For example, he has confidential transaction, and this is incredibly powerful, and especially in, in the concept of DeFi, you know, like decentralized finance, 
in Ethereum, basically, you know, decentralized exchange in Ethereum, everybody, your competitor or even your, uh, everybody can see the trades. So, and miners can front run you, right? They can see the trade, they can basically sneak in and they just, you know, uh, make some profit out of it because everything is public compared to, for example, in a broker, in a normal broker, only the broker, the bank, maybe the government knows about your trade, but not your competitor. So I think liquid adding confidential transaction, which means nobody can see how many uh, funds or, or, or what type of asset you're sending, that's definitely very interesting for uh, decentralized, you know, finance application. And then yes, you have covenants and so to speak smart contracts. So you can do, I would say 90% of use case Ethereum promise to you, you can do it with covenants. So liquid has already, already a, a version of Bitcoin script with more of codes that allows you to do a lot of use case uh, more than the Bitcoin main chain. Then you have one minute deterministic block time and that and this for financial application is very important. You want to have a, a recurrent and predictable and deterministic settlement time compared to maybe other blockchain where you know like minor, you know, like you know, can uh, delay the things and things and, and so on. You have you can issue asset, tether is issued there, a lot of securities are issued there, but you can issue your own asset, you can issue even your dot coin, you can do anything, right? And yeah, you can do AtomiSwap. AtomiSwap is a form of basically exchanging signature between two parties without using the blockchain. So you exchange signature between each other. It's very similar to CoinJoin. So you just you know talk to another party and then you promise to sell some tether for some Bitcoin. And this and this trade happens in a single transaction in an atomic way. Either it goes or it doesn't go. So this is very very uh, game changer, especially if you come from financial, uh, you know, from the financial sector. Okay, now let's, let's understand, okay, but how I can combine it with Lightning, right? One thing very, very interesting is the fact that being um, liquid based on elements, which is a fork of Bitcoin Core, you have the same scripting and the same capabilities of, you know, Bitcoin main chain. So we can do summary swap. Summary swap are used, used now between Bitcoin main chain and, you know, Lightning. So if you don't want to close your channel, but you need some Bitcoin on chain, you do a summary swap. Well, you can even have uh, liquid Bitcoin instead of Bitcoin main chain, right? So you can use the liquid chain as a target destination for your for your lightning uh, summary swap. So the idea is basically that you have some smart contract right on liquid, and you can fund it with your lightning uh, wallet, any lightning wallet, and this lightning payment will basically fund the coin. There will be some execution, whatever it happens in smart contracts, and then you can withdraw with another summary swap back to your lightning wallet. So from back to the example before, for example, Geyser can do this, so it can give the same lining user experience to the user, exactly the same, but in the back, instead of using you know, their own database, their own centralized infrastructure, they're using a public blockchain, right, a public section uh, with smart contract capabilities, so they can move some logic, like for example, milestone, or I, I don't know, refund in case you don't reach, you know, uh, your cap in your crowdfunding campaign, you can move that logic from your own trust to, you know, to Liquid. So I think this approach would be very interesting. There are a couple of projects. PeerSwap is a decentralized way to anybody can be a summary swap provider. And Waltz Exchange also, Waltz is very popular for lining, lining to Bitcoin um, uh, summary swap. And they also added Liquid recently. So you can already uh, use it uh, in production today. And then you say, okay, Marco, but you know, you, you told him about this smart contract, but what can I do? Like, show me, like, you know, what, what can happen. And I think one interesting part, definitely the financial application are the most interesting to me because there is the trust, like, uh, you know, giving away the trust is the most critical part. I think one, things like trading pools, right? The so called uh, AMM, right? Automatic Market Maker. And we have Bitmatrix as an example, live and liquid. You can do lending pools, right? So you can do like Compound is a popular smart contract on Ethereum. You can immediately you can build it um, on Liquid right away. So in a, without an escrow, without the interactivity, you can create a pool where basically anybody can lend money, any, anybody can borrow in a way that is always over collateralized, so nobody gets or pulled, basically. You can build a derivative exchange, maybe a bit com complex, but definitely you can do it. Uh, you can do option contract. Um, I think Blockstream has a paper about it already out, so they already show how to do it, right? How to write Bitcoin script um, and do and doing option uh, counter. As I said, you can build Geyser, like crowd sale or crowdfunding application. 
or a very fun, interesting use case, but this is very interesting because you can board normies, are you know, gambling, lotteries, roulette, these kind of things. I really think that it's very interesting to add because it can help people to onboard to Bitcoin in general, to the Bitcoin ecosystem. Okay, so let's see some example, right? So let's see how it works. How we can rebuild, uh, you know, Geyser um, instead of using MySQL or whatever database they use, but using Liquid as a smart contract. So the idea here is, is basically, you know, on the left, right, we have the user, and the user don't, doesn't even know what's happening in the back. They just see an invoice, like now, if you go to Geyser, you see a line invoice, you pay an invoice. So that user experience will be exactly the same. So you see an invoice from your browser, you pay that invoice, and then what happens is that that invoice is actually a summary as well that directly your browser is using to, you know, to fund uh, what they call commitment covenant, to fund, you know, your, your smart contract on the liquid, and then eventually, you know, this uh, covenant, this smart contract, has some rule. And it can be very simple, like, can, can have two rules. If the goal is rich, meaning that, I don't know, uh, if we raise, I don't know, 100 million Satoshi, then okay, the beneficiary, right, the, the, the owner of the campaign uh, can, when the goal is rich, it can definitely, you know, uh, withdraw the money, and also you can do a summary swap on the other way to get back his money on your own Lightning wallet. And he doesn't need to have a, a Lightning node uh, live, right? Because if only when the goal will be reached, it will be basically sweep from Liquid direct to his, his own mobile Lightning wallet. So it's even even easier for uh, you know for beneficiaries. Or if it happens that nobody, if you know, like this campaign doesn't reach you know the the, the cap, uh, everybody can without any interaction of anyone, can refund and go back, you know, uh, again, with a summary swap, um, you know, again, to his own line wallet. So we can see how basically you can make sure that, and also Geyser can eventually, if he's running this infrastructure, we can also charge a fee. Because a lot of times, you know, a uh, problem with uh, Lightning applications say, okay, yeah, I can do things, you know, in a certain way, but how I make money, how I can charge. And the thing is that I can put in the comments some condition that, you know, the, who is running this infrastructure, who is running all these pieces, uh, can definitely take account out of this. And yeah, again, for the user, the UX didn't change. The user, they are paying a Lightning invoice. They don't even know what's happening in the back. And then you say, okay, well, this is just you know your own idea, only you, you can make it. No, it's live. Um, this I, I made it last uh, November when I presented this concept in, in El Salvador already. And you know, I made this re report on my way to El Salvador in a couple of days, right? So you can look it up, it's live. There is no backend at all. So you just go there, uh, you pay with your lightning voice, with a, it is only working in testnet. So you pay with your you know, uh, lightning uh, testnet wallet, and that's it. You can literally experiment. We are going to see it later. Let me just finish maybe another contract idea. Uh, one part very interesting to me is like, oh, I can work on Bitcoin, my Norwegian friend. My Norwegian friend, they don't care about all, you know, in general, the ideology behind, but they literally, they spend money in gambling and betting every, every week. So I think, and they understand very well the fact that, you know, if the bookmaker go bust or for some reason the bookmaker can prompt from you, uh, they understand very well that part, right? And so proposing them uh, automated betting uh, smart contract where there are no, nobody, so as you see, nobody can stop it in some way. I don't know, I'm just I'm not <laughs> suggesting anything. I'm just saying, you know, like in general, there will be no party, no counterparty there, uh, so it can be automated. Um, the idea will be basically the same. Uh, because yeah, Liquid has a of code called deterministic random, which allows you to do lotteries or any kind of thing. So basically, an opcode that you can verify that pick a random number, right, from a set of entropy. So the idea will be again the same. You go in a browser page, you see an invoice, you pay that invoice to place your bet, right? So I'm I'm uh, I'm doing a roulette, so I'm placing two red. The other guy is placing another twelve black, whatever. So everyone else is paying invoice, is placing the bet. Uh, and commits to the smart contract on Liquid, then there will be another main column which will basically aggregate this, so it will be a second transaction on Liquid, but again, it's one minute uh, transaction time, so I think it's bearable to be total. So in the second, um, in the second minute, in the betting column, what will happen if we aggregate on the commitment, the opt-deterministic random will pick, right, you know, a random number, and the winner, if there is a winner, 
uh, can then, uh, in a non-interactive way, can you know claim his own uh, victory. And then again, he can uh, summon his wall again to his lightning wallet. So he, he doesn't know what happened in the deck. So, uh, so yeah, uh, I think that's all. Uh, I think we are going just to see a live example of this. Um, so let me go on start starter first. So yeah, um, the idea is very very simple. I, I hope it's uh, is uh, big enough. Uh, the idea is very simple. Anybody can you know post his own project like on Geyser or Kickstarter or whatever. And I don't know, like this 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 guy is like saying, okay, my project you know is me 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 money blah blah blah. The idea will be okay. I want to contribute to this project. So I click on here. Let's see if I connect it. Yeah. All right. Okay, so I say, okay, I want to donate fifteen dollars, right, to, to to this campaign. What is happening now is I'm calling Bolt's uh, Bolt Summary Swap Provider API. I say, hey, give me an invoice. I want to pay. So what I'm going to do? Let me go to htlc.me, which is a which is a testnet wallet in the browser. I don't have any money. Hmm. Okay, now I have money. Okay, let me go here. So I copy the invoice like you would do with your mobile wallet, etc. etc. Let's hope it works. There's not been it? Uh, that's not. That's why I don't know. Yeah, it's one of the channels, right? That's <laughs> it's always uh, okay. It worked, so payment is successful. So the browser, what is doing now the browser is like it's funding the contract for me. So there is no backend, there is no private key. So what he's doing is like you know spending that. Let's hope his uh, internet is a bit. Anyway, I think that you got the gist anyway, even if it doesn't work. So the idea is like the same UX you will have in a centralized application lining, you pay an invoice, and you fund directly uh, that commitment coin that would be your donation. And eventually you can spend from that point from the same uh, UI. Yeah, there is some issue about the bug later, but I think you guys get um, the, the bottom-up uh, idea. So I, I can show you another example, which is also a project which, are, which I'm working on, uh, which, is called, which is called Fuji. The idea of Fuji is basically, you know, you can create this kind of MakerDAO, but for, for Bitcoin or Liquid, so the idea... Hmm, Okay. So the idea you can basically uh, create a Bitcoin uh, over stable stablecoin using your own Bitcoin as a collateral and you can always exit from your own you know, contract. So you don't need to have an escrow, you need any one. So it's very similar to you know, other crypto backed you know, stablecoin but using liquid Bitcoin in the back. And also here we allow you, you know, this is your dashboard, you can see your open contract, whatever. And let's say, okay, I want to mint, but I want to use my Lightning Wallet, I don't have any liquid Bitcoin to, to, you know, to borrow this, this stablecoin. So I go here, click on mint, let's say, I, don't know, I want to borrow 10, 10, 10 sets, uh, sorry, 10 dollar um, of, of this Fuji USD. Then there is some collateral here that we need to post. Some oracle I can decide. Let's say I wanted to go on the deposit. Here, you know, I can decide if I already have a wallet with liquid, like that would be an option. But if I don't have it, I want to start, I can use my lightning wallet right away. And again, the same the same approach. So like the browser contact for me, the summary provider, gives me an invoice, right? I can go back on HTC me, pay this invoice. Yeah, that's not as a bit. Okay, the payment is received. So basically the browser now what it's doing is spending the summary as well directly to the Fuji, you know, uh, to the Fuji contract. So it has been successful, which means that you know uh, I borrow uh, this uh, this table coin, right? I can check, oh yeah, this blockchain always never work. Let me go to Mantbook. My blockstream overlord will forgive me. For this, 
Well, and the jury is in that for Right, <laughs> right. So, okay, here, here it is, right? You got the one confirmation. Uh, I mean, is our normal, you know, normal transaction where you can see here I have my 10 Fuji was the, you know, back to my wallet. Anyway, that's just to show that is you know it's something that is being used and can be used in production today. And the UX is literally I'm paying a lightning app. So if you know a normal custodial application can be a lightning app, even a smart contract on Liquid running there can be a lightning app. Um, that's it. Thank you. Yep. So I guess. Everything like in a, a Solidity smart contract in on the ETH side with ETH as the, uh, the gas, basically you can accomplish from those ideas that you had in your first slide, basically you can accomplish everything that you could in Solidity and ETH with, uh, with a smart contract here except Lightning being the gas equivalent, is that a fair statement? Exactly, exactly. I really think that this is the, the right mental model. Like, you know, you, if, Lightning, if Bitcoin is the money of the world, then Lightning will be the payment rates, you know, the, the standard payment method. I think if smart contracts are useful for something, you should pay with Lightning. <laughs> the smart contract is crucial. So, uh, definitely, yeah, it could be a solid version of this approach, for sure. And, and then you can make, uh, well, actually, I guess for Lightning, it is Solidity the smart contract language, or does it have its own? You know? No, 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 a, a, a liquid uh, is basically a fork of Bitcoin exactly. Core, so it's the same Bitcoin script that you can have on normal Bitcoin, but with more uh, capabilities, right? So it's like an extended capabilities compared to Bitcoin script, but it's very similar to Bitcoin in, in terms, right? So the same type of address, the same type of, you know, kind of script you can do on Bitcoin, you can do on liquid, with much more, much more things, because we have these things called covenants that, you know, maybe you have heard, overheard a lot in the Bitcoin community, but it's been told how to migrate covenants on Bitcoin as well. So Liquid already has covenant, that's why, you know, And then as far as front ends, like, you know, I mean, you're obviously using a, a, a web front end, so I guess in the Web3 universe, that you'll have maybe MetaMask and... No, you know, it's Web, so they, when we talk about Web3, we are talking about uh, an MDM package called Web3 that's like, in the browser will come up as window.web3. Yeah. The Bitcoin HTTP standard that we use is window.webln. So it's incompatible with MetaMask. MetaMask does have its own crap over there, but it's, you're, it's he's detecting in the browser window.webln. Yeah. yeah, if you want to interact with the contract, you know, like for example, now I created a contract, right? So I use a lining to create this uh, 10 Fuji was the contract. If I want to close it, you know, yeah, I can use lining. But the idea is that, you know, eventually have some keys on liquid, you know, if for more complex, you need a liquid wallet to interact with the contract, right? And there is an equivalent in the liquid space of MetaMask, which is called Marina, uh, I guess. So it would be an equivalent to that. So you can do this exact same approach. So you can interact with the contract, do some execution after it with, with Marina eventually. So And even like, let's say uh, from a mobile client, I mean, there's you can make native. Uh, oh yeah. HTTP or WF, yeah, 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 yeah. In the end, in the end, yes. You, it's just you're just. Uh, I mean, it's even better than the Ethereum virtual machine, I guess, the Bitcoin yeah. script because you just do everything on your own. Like you basically build transaction and then you broadcast transaction. So it's even more easier. So you don't need like I don't know to send a transaction just to change some parameter. You just do that. Definitely everything off chain. When you're ready, you broadcast the transaction. You and to spend that you think so. Like a really fundamental difference between this and like EVM stuff is that EVM, the way that it stops you from doing an infinite loop is that you have to pay per iteration of the loop. That's why the gas fee, even if the transaction is not confirmed, you still pay the gas fee, right? For this one, you're paying for the execution of the transaction, which is provably endable, so you don't need to pay gas. And if the, tra if the transaction is not included in a block, you don't pay anything, right? Even after you broadcast it. Right. Yeah, the, the advantage of Bitcoin, Bitcoin approach is that if a transaction is valid before entering the mantle, it will be always valid. Uh, so it, it cannot fail, so to speak. Yeah. Uh, right. So if, if it's there, you just need to wait to be included in a block. Then, uh, then we'll, we'll yeah. But if it's not included, you don't pay anything. It's as yeah. if the transaction never happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you can double spend. Uh, as long as you remember, you can cancel it, double spending it, basically. But yeah, yeah. you can cancel it. Gotcha. Thanks. Okay. When simplicity? Um, well, it's a bit controversial to me. I don't think you need simplicity to do, and most of the time, like, it's, Bitcoin script is more efficient than simplicity. So I think the fact that they say, oh, you cannot do smart contracts because we don't have simplicity, it doesn't sound right to me, right? So it's just that you don't want to do it. And it would be even harder to do 
uh, smart contract was crazy because we had like 10 years of Bitcoin scale knowledge at least, right? Either between Bitcoin Core, Bitcoin Cash, and there are people doing, so you have material, at least you can see the example. Um, simplicity would be just a new thing, and I don't think that that will improve the adoption from the developer. It will probably make it worse. So, um, unless, you know, like there will be a high level language like Solidity that compiles to, you know, simplicity. But at that point, you say, okay, I want to compile to simplicity or I want to compile to uh, the script. Right, so you just the high level language would be, I think, the catalyst for having a developer. Can you show the contract for Uji is uh, for the script list? Uh, yeah, I mean, okay. When I own you. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, good point. Yeah, let's do a campaign, a crowdfunding campaign. Okay. <laughs> um, so yeah, we got this repo called TaskScript, which you know, let's try to to have all the contract. So I think that we have multiple phases now. Um, I think the alpha will be just one single type. We call it safe. Safe is what keeps your Bitcoin there and does some rule. And the safe, which, what we call Fuji Prime, uh, basically allows you to do private redemption. So you can always, only the owner can unlock your own uh, collateral. I hope this you can have. So um, the idea you have like three, it's a tactful output. So you have three uh, script pass plan. One is the redemption, which means I need to board my Fuji USD to get back my Bitcoin. You don't need cooperation to anybody. Or liquidation means that, you know, now the treasury, but in the future can be a liquidator who um, can, you know, if the price, the value of your collateral goes down, or the liquidation token, target that we all agreed beforehand, of course, right? Uh, you, you get liquidated, right? Yeah. Because someone else is burning Fuji USD on your behalf to take your all of your collateral. You still keep your Fuji USD that you bought originally, of course, but you lose all the extra uh, Bitcoin collateral. So liquidation will never happen because you can always top up, right? Either you top up or you redeem, you do private redemption before that happens if you don't have enough collateral. Um, and then yet this is the claim because, you know, the Fuji Prime approach is like you need to close it every month. So it's basically you pay an interest rate and this interest rate is, is allows you to basically not having the full liquidation, so we, we basically give you back 90% of your extra collateral and also private redemption. Because the other alternative that, that would be in beta, which would be safe unlimited, uh, the safe, um, uh, the limited, sorry, the limited safe instead allows everybody to go to your safe, uh, burn some push USD and redeem the counter value in Bitcoin. Yeah. The, the remaining book will go to the original borrower, so, right? But this allows to create a price floor because imagine that you know the stable coin is going you know uh, under the peg in the markets. Allow who want to do some profit with arbitrage can buy on the market. I don't know, it's trading ninety five cents on the dollar. You buy it on the market and you basically go to any safe and you redeem one dollar value of Bitcoin. So this is like the force that created price floor. And uh, unless you need an interest rate, because that interest rate needs to be done to provide liquidity on the other side, the Bitcoin or for any other stable coin. And so yeah, there will be these two type of version. So okay, back to the, let's see the code. I wanted to explain the different you know path of uh, that. Um, so we have these are basically you know uh, the three you know tab script right that we actually for. Uh, is also the renew because if you want to renew without closing, you can pay a line invoice to us as a liquidator, and that it would be rolled over for you. So it would be even easier if you don't need to close it and reopen. You just pay a line invoice to us. Um, so let's say, for example, uh, let's look at the redeem, which is the the thing you lock Bitcoin there, right? So and then you say, okay, I want to. I'm done with my push USD games, whatever. I want to get back my Bitcoin, right? So what you do? Um, I mean, I don't know, it's a bit constrained, but you know, like definitely, you know, you can go step by step. Uh, but the idea of you can inspect the first output, and the first output must be an op return with the 100 Fuji USD. So everybody, and also the contract, the, the address, basically will release the Bitcoin only if he sees that you are burning um, the 100 Fuji USD that has been, you know, issued to you yeah. uh, before. That's why we need comments, and we can go on Bitcoin yeah. right now, because we need to introspect the transaction, how you're spending your, your UTXO, and if you see that you're boarding that amount, okay, we release it. Uh, then we do other check, like your, okay, this is basically inspect, you know, inspect, uh, yeah, yeah, so I'm doing inspect uh, strip key, so I'm, I'm checking that it's uh, minus one, which means operator, and then this is operator, you know, and call yeah. it as uh, X. Um, then I want to see, you know, your mouse, whatever, uh, blah, blah, blah. And then I want to check, you know, the last thing is a check seek on the borrower, 
for key. So yeah. that's why we call private redemption. Yeah. Only the, the, the original owner can redeem his yeah. own uh, his own Bitcoin, and that's why you charge an interest rate because yeah. it's uh, I'll say a prime uh, premium feature. And yeah, that's right. Um, so this is the redeem part. Let's see the liquidation part, which is the other important part. The liquidation part is, I would say, um, similar. Uh, the difference is that you also need to pass, um, you know, the current price, uh, the timestamp, or currently, and the signature uh, from the Oracle. Yeah. So an Oracle can be Bitfinex or Bloxem. Those are the two first we are working with, but can be an exchange, can be Kraken, Binance, and, and, and so on. And you choose it, right? You as a borrower, you choose it. Who is the Oracle you want to trust? So how many Oracles? Because you can put multiple Oracles. That would be multiple tap leaf, tap leaf for each Oracle. So yeah, you need to pass as a liquidator. Who is the liquidator? Need to pass the signature from the oracle, and you know at the moment we are the only liquidator. So the treasury, we call treasury, we call us treasury. Uh, we need to also put our own key. But eventually, in the future, can be uh, you know, a federation, yeah. and that's our approach next. So it can be uh, can be a definitely a federation, you know, that uh, run uh, the Fuji treasury uh, for sure. And what he's doing here is like okay. Uh, let's check the current price, right? Uh, let's check that the current price you're passing is, you know, less than the price level. That this price level was coded, you know, beforehand in the script, right? Uh, and then you also want to check the timestamp, so you're not reusing our old, uh, our old uh, signature. Then you concatenate this. That's why we need opcat. Yeah. So we concatenate with this after we do this check, and we compare uh, this concatenation. Uh, we compare it against, uh, we check SIG from Stack Verify. Yeah. Uh, we compare it to the, the recover to the Oracle Pocky. So yeah. we also check that the signature is correct. Then, again, we also need to inspect, uh, as in redemption, we need to inspect that the first output is an opera tool that contains the amount of FujiRSD. So you always need to borrow the FujiRSD to get out the Bitcoin. No matter what you are the borrower or you are the liquidator, you always need to decrease the supply, circulating supply of the synthetic asset, you know, the Fuji USD in, in circulation to get out uh, your Bitcoin. So it will, it will always be over price by yeah. this way because it's enforced by the script. And yeah, you know, I check the asset, I check the value, you know, all these kind of things. Check the script again, it's in uh, minus one, it's operator, this is the operator. Uh, code and yeah, I checked that the treasury, um, you know, let's check it. It can be, you know, a Musi or, you know, Ashnor, you know, um, it can be Ashnor, Ashnor signature of many, many federa federation members, for example. Yeah, exactly. Um, or it can be another token as well. Um, so it, you can create a liquidator pool. So we have that in roadmap, uh, actually. Uh, it's kind of interesting research. You have here called liquidator pool, which is basically you need a deposit covenant. A withdraw comment and then you know uh, liquidate uh, a liquidator you know uh, comment. So that will be a bit bit more complex, but you know it's a roadmap and that will allow anybody to basically commit FujiBSD in a pool, and that ev everybody. So you don't need any private key or any server. Anybody can basically when we see there is a liquidation to be done, we use the pool uh, the pool the, the, the pool funds to liquidate the, yeah. the underwater saves. And this way, you basically, out yeah, basically you also automate you automate the liquidation part. And you can also like say, okay, I will not let you borrow which was the from the mint. Uh, so, yeah, because in the beta there will be also the minting will be another covenant. So the mint can be connected to the liquidator pool and say, okay, I will not let you borrow if there is not enough amount in the liquidation pool because every time you borrow there should be enough liquidation, you know, enough which was the put aside to cover your liquidation when that can happen. So okay, there are many things that can be put on chain. But step by step, right? So yeah. starting with Alpha, which is just safe, yeah. and everything is just run by by us, I would say. But step by step, we want to you know move all the logic we can uh, on chain. That's this one. Right. Thanks. Uh, that's it. <laughs> Thank you.